This sermon is titled My Mind Part 1 The Mind, Imagination and Mental Health Be enriched as you listen We're uh, going to talk about I'll be titling this series of messages simply My Mind and uh, we're going to spend some time learning from the Word of God about our minds. Um, now, you know, uh, we plan a lot of things ahead of time and, uh, you know, we plan to do these series of messages, sent it out to our pastoral team because we coordinate across all our five, six locations, uh, including Mangalore. And um, now, uh, past two days, I was uh, ministering in uh, Ambernath, just suburb of Mumbai. I came back yesterday, came home, and uh, then Amy came and told me, uh, do, you do you know that Monday, the 10th of October, is World Mental Health Day? I said, no, I didn't. And uh, then she said, yeah, you better clarify it. Otherwise, people will think you're preparing your sermons based on <laughs> what's going around the world. No. So this, all this was planned way ahead. I didn't know that tomorrow is World Mental, Mental Health Day, none of that. Uh, but Amy just let me know, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's nice that these things coincide, uh, that we could be talking about the mind from a biblical perspective, of course, and, um, and then, you know, the world is doing uh, its part in trying to help people in this area. So, as we build up this series of messages, today we're going to talk about the mind, uh, imagination, and mental health, just kind of introduce that subject from a biblical perspective. In the coming weeks, we'll talk about different areas uh, that uh, all of us struggle with, but our goal is to recognize that there are challenges, but what is the Bible way, a God-given way to address those problems that you and I face in the area of our mind? So we can take a biblical approach, take the God-given principles, the empowering of the Holy Spirit to address these challenges that we all face. Nobody's exempt. Uh, from these things. So we'll talk next week about concentration, distractions, and wandering. What do you do with that? Uh, we'll talk about temptations, addictions, and deceptions. Uh, we'll talk about controlling your thoughts, not training your thinking. We'll talk about renewing our mind and renewed thinking. Uh, we'll talk about over overcoming negative thoughts. You know, all of us have to deal with that, how to overcome negative thoughts. We go through various situations in life, and we've got to learn how to, uh, you know, stay positive, stay, uh, uh, stay established in the promises of God. And uh, we'll talk about maintaining a positive mindset. So uh, all of these things, we are going to approach it from the Scriptures based on the Word of God. And so uh, follow along with me. Uh, you know, in, in, in the Word. Now, just, just as a you know, way to get started, uh, it's very interesting to know that uh, our, our brain uh, uh, is this, this physical organ, the brain, uh, weighs about 1.3 kilograms and uh, is mainly made up of fat and water. And, uh, you know, the human brain isn't fully formed until we're 25. And it starts developing from the back towards the front. So the frontal lobes are the last to develop. That's the part of our brain that deals with planning and reasoning. So some of us parents understand our young adults. <laughs> the, the neurons, the nerve cells, there are about 100 billion neurons in our brain. And uh, they could, you know, they form connections with each other called synapses. And... Uh, and uh, there are, there are cl close to, you know, 10 to the power of 14 to 10 to the power of 15 connections in our brain. And uh, uh, so really the brain's capacity to store information is almost unlimited. It's virtually unlimited. And these connections between these neurons, they get strengthened as we, through repetition, as they uh, fire synchronously, uh, they get strengthened, and that's why repetition and, and, and uh, you know, uh, just recall is, is one very important part of strengthening our memory because it strengthens these connections. It's very interesting that the electrical impulses that go through these nerve cells travel at the speed of, of about 268 miles an hour. That's pretty good speed. And, uh, you know, the energy that our brain 
the electrical energy in our brain can act, it's about 23 watts of power, that's enough to power up a light bulb. And that's very interesting. So, as amazing as our brain is, a physical organ, yet we all understand that there is this intangible aspect called the mind. The logic, the reasoning, the thinking, the imagination, the memory, that's the intangible part. So, uh, uh, there is the physiological part, but then there is this intangible part that is so important. So although the brain itself, you know, of course, we have, people are studying it, trying to understand it, and then this mind aspect is also another big area that, uh, that is still being explored and trying to be understood. Now, we all know that there are challenges in the area of the mind. For example, physiologically, you can have, there is unlimited memory, but practically we all know. We, it doesn't happen that way. We forget. We have emotions. Uh, we feel things. Uh, sometimes we feel good, sometimes we feel bad. Uh, and, and then we feel stressed, we feel overwhelmed, and all those kinds of things in the mind. And that's not something you just treat physiologically. It's an intangible part of our being, and yet a very real part. How do we address the challenges, the problems that we all experience in this intangible part, the mind? That's what we want to explore. Let's turn in our Bibles, first of all, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. We're going to spend our, a little bit of time in Scripture today, and uh, not very, uh, we're not going to look at too many scriptures, but stay with me, please. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. They come up on the screen as well. First Thessalonians 5, 23. Let's read that out together. I hope uh, those of you at the back can see the screen. Otherwise, uh, and we'll work on this, get these things a little bigger so uh, you can see the text uh, at the back of the hall. Uh, let's read it. First Thessalonians 5, 23. Let's go. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we've seen these words of Scripture many times before. What can we see in the Scripture? Let's keep the Scripture up. Um, first of all, we see that we are tripart beings. Every person is a spirit soul and body. Right? So spirit, soul, body. Spirit, pneuma, that part of us that connects with God or the spiritual world. Soul, Greek is suke, it's the mind, the will, and the emotions. And the body, soma, it's the outer man by which we connect with the physical world. So we see that. And he says, may the God of peace sanctify you wholly. Now, what I want to, to impress here on us is this, that God created us spirit, soul, and body. So, God created your soul. He created your mind, your will, your emotions. God created, God designed and created our ability to think, reason, imagine, uh, remember our memories. He created all of that, all those mental faculties. So, the premise is, these things are good. We have to use them in the right manner. Amen? So, sometimes we Christians behave as mindless people. Right? We don't use our logic. We don't use our thinking. No, your, your mind is not bad. God designed it. Your imagination is not bad. God designed it. Your ability to think and reason is not bad. God designed it. Use it. But we must learn how to use it properly. Are you all with me? Right? So, uh, your mind is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's created by God and all the mental faculties. They're created by God. We just learn how, we must just learn how to use it. The next thing is, as we see, may the God of peace himself sanctify you. The word sanctify simply means to make holy. So God wants to make us holy, spirit, soul, and body. We are focusing on the soul, so let's talk about that. God wants the soul 
to be made holy, to be sanctified. That means he wants it to be hallowed, consecrated, set aside for his use. Are you with me? So that means in the world, the soul is being pulled in by all the wicked thoughts and evil things. And they want to occupy space in our mind. Ungodliness, ungodly things. They want to occupy space in our mind. But God is saying, look, I want to sanctify your soul. I want to make your soul holy. So that's what God wants to work in you and me. Imagine this, that your soul, your mind is holy ground. Amen? It is no place for ungodly thoughts, no place for lustful thoughts, no place for you know, uh, unclean passions, no place for uh, uh, unclean fantasies, no place for that. Your soul, God wants it to be holy. So put your right hand up and say this with me. My soul is holy. My mind is holy ground. It's sanctified. It's consecrated unto God. Amen? That's a possibility if we let God work in us. You know, I, I know that for some of us, this is a big struggle. Maybe you're, you're, you've been in pornography for so many years and, you know, having a clean thought is a miracle. I say, look, how, is it possible that my mind can be holy ground? Yes, the God of peace can sanctify your soul. Amen? He can do that. For you and me. So that our mind becomes holy ground. So God wants to work in us in that manner. And then we also see here, the third thing we see is, he says that, that your spirit, soul, and body may be kept complete. It's very interesting to look at. Kept complete. The word kept has the idea of being protected. Protected. So God wants to protect, and we're focusing on the soul. God wants to protect your soul, keep it complete. The word complete means to be sound, to be whole. So God wants to work in you and me in such a way that he can protect our soul so that it can be sound and whole. Now in the world, we're going to face things that hurt us in the area of our soul our mind, our will, our emotions. We're going to face things that try to damage our soul. But the God of peace wants to work in you and me in such a way that the soul can be protected and kept sound and whole. Are you with me? Yes or no? God wants to do that. So that is God's desire. And that's what we want to, you know, journey through uh, as we go through the Word of God over the several, next several weeks so that we learn how we can protect our soul so that it is kept whole, sound, well, and, and, and in good condition. So God would work it with the, within us in this manner so that eventually the goal is that when we meet Jesus, we'll be presented faultless and blameless. So God desires to work in us so that our soul can be kept holy and kept whole. Let's say this together. God desires to work in me so that my soul is kept holy and whole. Amen? Tell yourself that. God wants to work in me so that my soul, which is this mental side of me, the mind, the emotions, the will, can be kept holy and can be kept whole, sound, well. So when we talk about the mind, of course we're talking about our thinking, our reasoning, our intelligence, our emotions, our imaginations, and our memory. So I just want us to affirm this together. Let's say this with me. Uh, let's say this together. The God of peace himself desires to work in me so that my thinking, reasoning, intelligence, emotions, and imaginations and memory can be made holy and kept whole, sound, and in good health. Amen? So when you wake up in the morning, or whenever you feel like it, say it. God wants to work in me to keep my mind holy and whole. Say that. That's the word of God. He wants to keep my imaginations, my reasoning, my thinking, my emotions, my appetites, my passions, my, my memory. He wants to keep it holy. He wants to keep it whole. And I say, God, I welcome you to do it. 
do it in me. And he will do it by his word and by the work of his Holy Spirit. So we're going to journey into this. Now let's talk a little bit about the importance of the mind and the imagination. You know, our, our mind, our imagination is so important for all of us. And, you know, these are just some common observations. Our thoughts determine our actions. Now, we start thinking about something and most often we then proceed to doing that. We, um, we, it turns into actions and then actions determine behavior and then behavior becomes a lifestyle. So eventually a thought could become a lifestyle. Just think about that. Now, if you entertain a thought, and if it is a wrong thought, and you've entertained it, first time it's an action, but then the thought repeats, and you keep doing it, eventually that thought can become a behavior in your life, a lifestyle for you and me. Just a thought. Our thoughts affect our emotions. Now, a, a wrong thought, a a negative thoughts. Now you may be feeling great. You woke up in the morning and one wrong thought, one negative thought impinges on your mind. And there you go from a scale of 99, zip, and you feel down. What happened? Just one negative thought impinged on your mind. You don't even know where it came from. And now you feel down and out. All zest gone. Emotions down. And, uh, uh, you know, so our, 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 the emo our, our emotions, our thoughts affect our emotions, and our if emotions affect our life, spiritual, mental, physical. You may have woken up this morning, say, I'm going to pray for three hours, and you woke up in the morning, and at that right moment, as you're getting ready to pray, one thought. And whatever you planned to do in prayer could have gone. But you and I must learn how to control our thoughts. Amen? You can't prevent those negative thoughts from coming, but you and I can learn how to deal with those negative thoughts and not let those negative thoughts dictate what we do in life. Are you with me? We can learn to do that. But we must understand the importance of these thoughts. Our imaginations can either energize us or impair us. Our imagination is so powerful. Thank God for the imagination. In your imagination, you can go into a future that, that you can envision with God and by the Holy Spirit and say, that's the future I'm working for. You know, whatever it is, if you're a software developer, in your mind, you've already designed the whole product and you're, you're excited about that. You may be writing your first line of code. But you've envisioned the end result. You may be, you know, uh, building a business. And in your mind, you've already envisioned what your business is going to look like. And you're on day one, just starting your business. But that imagination energizes you and helps you journey through to reach your destination. So our imagination is so powerful. But it can also impair somebody even before they get started. But God created our imagination, and we must learn how to use our imagination to our advantage and for the glory of God. The beautiful thing is this, that the Holy Spirit speaks to us, and when the Spirit of God speaks to us, you know, God uses our mental faculties. Let me just back up a bit. You know, our, 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 our mental faculties are important for all activities of life. So whatever you, you know, our, our faculties, our ability to think, reason, our, solve problems, analyze, uh, forecast, all these things are very important for all activities of life. And so learning how to develop these things and, and intentionally develop, developing these things are good because you're going to be able to glorify God by developing your mind and the faculties that God has given to us. Uh, what's in our spirits? It's normally released through our souls and bodies. So the Holy Spirit, the way He communicates to us, He communicates to us in our spirit, but eventually it comes into your soul, your mind. Your mind recognizes it. Your mind process it, processes it, and your mind needs to test it. So whatever you feel you're picking up in your spirit is eventually processed in your mind. Are you with me? So our mind needs to be renewed, and it needs to be kept sanctified, and it needs to be trained to recognize when God speaks. That's so why mind is important. And uh, God uses our mental faculties in His process of communication with us. Dreams and visions are the language of the Holy Spirit. So, 
you know, when the Holy Spirit wants to communicate to you and me, He often uses dreams and visions, which are faculties of our minds. Are you listening? Now is not the time to dream. <laughs> but He does use dreams and visions to speak to us. And we, it comes in, you know, a, a dream comes, a vision comes, and the Holy Spirit is giving it to you. But we must learn how to receive it and then process it. So for all these reasons, our mind, the mind of a believer, uh, 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 and, you know, for all of us, it is important. But we also recognize that there are problems in the mind. You know, many of us face challenges in our mind. Uh, you know, we could have anger issues. We could have problems with our ability to concentrate. And uh, sometimes our mind is full of negative thoughts. Uh, we, uh, we could be struggling with addictions, uh, appetites that are, you know, that are given to wrong things, that are controlled by wrong things. It could be fear, anxiety. Uh, sometimes there's a poor self-image. Uh, we suffer from self-esteem, a low self-esteem. Sometimes there could just be denial, deception. There could be strongholds, could be strongholds of lustful thoughts, uh, sometimes the struggle of, you know, spending money. You get your m money uh, beginning of the month and a couple of days is gone. And, and, and some people struggle with things like that. Uh, it could be uh, suicidal tendencies, tendencies for self-harm, all kinds of problems that we have that people face. So our goal is to know how the, how the God of peace wants to work in us so that He can bring our mind, our soul, to a place of holiness and wholeness. Amen? We're going to learn that together. Today, I want to just present to us three states or three conditions of the mind that we see in Scripture. The Scripture talks about three conditions or states of the mind. It talks about the natural mind, the carnal mind, and the renewed mind. Can we say that together? The natural mind, the carnal mind, and the renewed mind. Three, three conditions, three states in which the mind can be. And I'll, we'll look at this in Scripture. So as a believer, you could be operating with a natural mind, and we all must use our natural mind. The fact that you came in this morning, you came in here because of your natural mind. Meaning you got up, you got ready, maybe you had your breakfast, you decided how you're going to come in here, you got into your vehicle, you drove carefully here, and you came and seat, were seated here. That's your natural mind at work. We all need to use our natural mind to engage with the natural world that we live in. Then there is the carnal mind. We will see in Scripture that the carnal mind is a mind that is focused on satisfying the ungodly desires of the flesh the body. So the body, uh, soma, the body, has desires. There are good desires and there are ungodly desires, evil desires, appetites. The evil desires in, in, the, in the New Testament is referred to as the word flesh. So when you think about flesh, don't think about mutton and chicken. <laughs> it's referring to the evil desires of the soma, the evil desires of the body. Right? Ungodly desires. That's the word sorx, flesh in Greek. So the carnal mind, a believer having a carnal mind, his mind is set on satisfying those desires. So that's a carnal mind. Whereas a renewed mind or a spiritual mind, as the Bible talks about it, is a mind that is set on the ways and thoughts of God. So as, a, as believers, we must learn to transition between natural mind and renewed mind. Our spiritual mind. Are you with me? As believers, we must learn to transition from natural to the renewed. Skip the carnal. <laughs> we have to be renewed so that we skip the carnal. If we get trapped in the carnal, that's when we do all the wrong things. So as believers, we, we transition. I'm in the natural mind now. I'm just making some natural decisions. What I'm going to eat or clothes to wear, fine. And then there are moments when I need to transition into the renewed mind, the spiritual mind. Think along the thoughts and the ways of God. Are you all with me? Now let's look in the scripture now uh, to uh, understand these things. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 
verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Let's read it together, please. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So the natural man is the man who is confining himself to his natural senses. You know, we have these five natural senses, what we see, hear, feel, taste, and touch, or uh, five natural senses, I repeated taste and feel, but uh, five natural senses, so the natural man is limiting himself to these natural senses. He's living his, his life confined to that. And so he cannot receive the things of the Spirit because things of the Spirit are spiritually discerned. It takes an enlightening from the Holy Spirit to understand spiritual things. So the natural man is living by his natural mind. Now, for all of us, we do live by the natural mind. You know, like I, let me explain. There are so many things we have to do to engage with this natural world with our natural mind. But the problem with living only by our natural mind is that we rule out the spiritual. So think about this. If a believer is only living by the natural mind, he's missing out on everything that's coming from the Spirit of God. Because those things are there, they are real, but a believer needs to know how to receive these things from the Spirit. So that's where the renewed mind or the spiritual mind comes in. We'll talk about it shortly. So as believers, we use our natural mind, but we don't limit ourselves to the natural mind. The next thing we're going to see is the carnal mind. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 7. Let's read it together, please. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So in verse 5, he's telling us what is the carnal mind. Those who set their mind on the things of the flesh, they are carnally minded. So that's being carnally minded. That is, it's a mind that has its affections on, on the things of the flesh, the wrong desires of the flesh. But when we set our affection on things of the Spirit, that is, we are being spiritually minded. Now, here Paul is telling us what will be the end result. If a believer lives according to his carnal mind, this is what's going to happen. It's going to result in death. He is actually going to be against God because he says the carnal mind is against God. He's going to be doing things against God. And he says, it's not going to result in life and peace. It won't, he's, he's going to be in turmoil, absence of peace. So carnal minds, resulting in death, putting us in a place out of alignment with God, and putting us in a place where we lack peace. There's going to be confusion and turmoil. If a believer is walking like this. But, if a believer is walking with a spiritual mind, according to the Spirit, it's going to result in life and peace. Are you with me? In another place, in 1 Corinthians 3, Paul rebukes the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. And he says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. For you are still carnal, for where there is envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Now you see the Corinthian church had powerful spiritual experiences. There's no denying of that. Paul says in first chapter 1, he says, you come behind in no gift, in all utterance, and in all knowledge. That means they, they had all the vocal gifts, they all had all the revelatory gifts. Wonderful. It is to the Corinthian church, he also wrote chapters 12, 13, 14, talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
But, so that means they were very open spiritually, but yet he's rebuking them here in chapter 3, and he says, you're carnal. So, you can imagine these believers. They were transitioning between natural, carnal, and spiritual. There were times they were very highly spiritual, but there were also times when they were in the carnal. And then, of course, the natural, which they had to carry out the day-to-day life. So they didn't skip the carnal. And so Paul rebukes them. He says, you're carnal. So how do we know we are carnal? First, you're not able to receive strong meat. I can't, I have to feed you milk all the time. And secondly, there is envy and strife and division. So, how do we know they're carnal? They are, fo- they are involved in these kinds of things. Envy, strife, and division. Quarreling, bickering, fighting, taking sides. I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, and I'm of Peter, and all of those kinds of things. And so these believers, the Corinthian church, was transitioning through all three states. They had wonderful experience of the Spirit, but they're also in this carnal state every now and then fighting with each other and also doing their natural things. Are you with me? So believers can transition and we don't want to be in this carnal state. We don't want to engage here. We don't want to engage in strife and division, competition and all those kinds of things. So let's talk about the renewed mind. Romans 12 too. We will you know, do a complete sermon later on on, on renewing the mind. Romans 12 and verse 2. Apostle Paul, he says this, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So remember in chapter 8, he had spoken to us about the carnal mind, the spiritual mind. Now he continues in chapter 12, where he's picking up on that, and he says, don't be conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the spiritual mind is this renewed mind. What is the renewed mind? We'll talk about it later, but very quickly. A renewed mind is a mind that is able to walk in the ways and thoughts of God rather than the ways and thoughts of man. The natural man walks in the ways and thoughts of man. The renewed mind walks in the ways and thoughts of God. Are you with me? So, as believers, we must learn How to walk with a renewed mind. Now let's bring up a very practical example just to illustrate these three conditions of the mind. And I'll be talking with reference to a believer. So let's say you're a believer. Uh, Your area of business is sales. Um, You've got targets set for you periodically, every quarter or whatever that period may be. And, uh, you know, you're you're brilliant. You've done your MBA, whatever, whatever, you know, you're brilliant. So you're using your natural mind, you're, you know, you're working out your plan. This is how I'm going to do my sales, this is how I'm going to meet my targets. Uh, and you've got your sales strategy, you've got all your contacts, your leads, you're following up with your potential customers, and you, everything is, is going great. So that's your natural mind at work. Now, you're coming close to the end of your sales period, and... There's a huge gap between what you have accomplished and what you're supposed to deliver. There's a huge gap. And, oh, panic sets in. Stressful time. How am I going to meet that? Now, hypothetical situation. A believer steps into his carnal mind. Okay, I know how to close these deals. Pay some bribes. Or I can falsify my numbers. I can do all the wrong, unscrupulous things, and I can show or somehow meet this target. I'm talking about believers. Don't look innocent. (laughs) Believers can do these things. It's not that they have lost their salvation. They're just operating in a carnal mind. And so they do this thing at work, and, you know, they get into trouble sometimes. Sometimes they can... Maybe go through that period and eventually get caught later, whatever. But that's a believer operating in the carnal mind, doing things he's not supposed to do that are dishonorable before God, unacceptable for God in order to meet those targets. 
But think about the same scenario, but if the believer steps into the renewed mind, what would he do? He'd say, God, I know I have to meet these things, but God, I'm going to use my faith on my work. Your word, he will speak the word of God over it. Yes, he's going to do his work using his natural mind, but now he's going to use his faith. He says, God, you said you will bless me in all the work of my hands. God, you said you will make me like a tree planted by rivers of water, that whatever I do will prosper. So I'm speaking the word of God over my circumstances. God, you surround me with favor as with a shield. God, you set me up above only and not beneath. What's he doing? He's causing his faith to bear upon his real life situation. Are you with me? Some of you are. Are you with me? And what else can he do with the renewed mind? He can pray, Holy Spirit, you're the spirit of wisdom. You're the spirit of understanding. Give me ways by which I can address this situation. Give me ideas. Give me strategies. Show me the people I need to contact or show me new avenues by which I can fulfill and meet my target and glorify God in my place of work. Holy Spirit, give me ideas. And he goes and prays in tongues. He seeks the Lord so that God can give him ideas. So he is, he is doing whatever he has to do with his natural mind to do his work, but he's stepping into his renewed mind, taking on the ways and thoughts of God and causing that to bear upon his everyday life situation and the Holy Spirit will speak to him giving him ideas in the realm of his imagination the Holy Spirit will inspire ideas and thoughts and strategies that he goes and executes that and the beauty of the Lord is seen upon his work that's a believer stepping into his renewed mind to meet a real life situation are you with me? So the challenge for you and me as believers is, yes, I have my natural mind, but I must learn how to step into my renewed mind, the spiritual mind, where I can tap into the ways and thoughts of God to address my life situations. I must avoid engaging uh, carnally. I must avoid engaging with things that are dishonorable to God because God wants my mind, my emotions to be holy and whole. Amen? Amen? So, as believers, we know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that we are a new creation. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are new. But here's the thing. When we got born again, God didn't change our soul and our body. When you got born again, you got born again in your spirit. You became a new creation in your spirit. You were brought into Christ in your spirit. But the soul, God wants to work through it or work in it as a process. He wants to work in our mind, our emotions by His Word and by His Spirit. Same thing with the body. He wants to help uh, by His Spirit. He wants us to discipline, crucify our body. And those two things, our soul and our body, happen as a process by His Word and by His Spirit. Are you with me? So, we are born again in the Spirit, but our soul and our body has to be disciplined. It has to be, tr the, body, the mind needs to be renewed, the body needs to be crucified, the flesh needs to be crucified, so that the new creation that you are in your spirit can manifest through you. And this is where the problem is for many believers. They have not renewed their minds, they are not crucified the flesh, and so Christ is not seen in them. But we are going to learn how to do this. Worship team, please come. So in closing, I want to encourage us that God is interested in our mental health and well-being. We understand that our mental health is so important for us because it affects everything. How we feel, how we think, how we behave, how we relate to others, and how we face life's challenges, and how we handle difficult situations. Our mental health is important. We also are aware that, you know, there are challenges that we face. But I want to just close by reminding us of that same verse of Scripture that we began with, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. I'll read it again for us. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept 
complete, without blame, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God sanctify you. Sanctify your soul. Make it holy, your soul, my soul. And may He keep it complete, keep it whole. Amen? So let's affirm this one more time. Let's say this together. We've done it earlier. Let's do it again. The God of peace Himself desires to work in me so that my thinking, reasoning, intelligence, emotions, imaginations, and memory can be made holy and kept whole, sound, and in good health. Amen. That's what God, the God of peace, will work in you and me. Amen. That our soul can be holy grounds. That you can learn to be free from all the evil thoughts, evil imaginations, negative thoughts, negative things. And the soul can be kept sound, whole, and well. By His Word, by His Spirit. Amen? So we're going to journey through this next several weeks as we open up the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit minister to us. We're going to take a few moments to pray. I request you to please stand. And, and uh, I want you to expect God to minister to you right now by His Spirit. Whenever the Word of God is preached, God is watching over His Word to proclaim it. We've come not only to hear the word, but experience the word manifested in our lives. May the God of peace do this. May he minister to you and me, even now, as we stand here, ministering healing and wholeness and deliverance in our lives. Just going to pray from here. But I want you to, as, wherever you're, as you're standing here and those of you who are watching online, as we take this time to pray, expect God to heal. Expect God to deliver. Because He wants us whole, sound and well, spirit, soul and body. of the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands and worship
take a moment to pray and even as I pray from here I want you to expect the Lord to touch and heal and deliver there's a physical condition in your body just lay your hand on yourself and just expect the Lord to touch and heal if you come in way down in your soul in your mind your emotions maybe you know that there are areas that you're captive, you're held captive, maybe to fear, maybe to wrong desires and addictions. Jesus Christ is our healer. Jesus Christ is the bondage breaker. Jesus Christ is the mighty deliverer. He's the God who works miracles. And as we call upon his name, the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, will be healed, will be delivered, will be rescued. Just call upon his name. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Those of you watching online, the Lord is present with you right where you are, whichever part of the world you're watching from. The same Jesus is with you. He is your healer. He is your deliverer. So in the mighty name of Jesus, right now, I command healing. I command bondages to be broken. I command areas of captivity to be broken. The captives set free. Right now in the name of Jesus, I come against you, Satan. I come against you, wicked spirits. I come against you, unclean spirits, holding people in bondage. In the name of Jesus, I command you leave. Command chains to be broken. Command areas in the mind that are held captive to be cleared now in the name of Jesus. Command sicknesses and diseases in Jesus' name to be healed. To be healed. Lord, we thank you for your healing virtue, for your healing power being administered to people and even as we receive by faith thank you Lord thank you Jesus praise you we honor you and we give you thanks we give you praise thank you O oh God We're going to close and pastors will be here. Those of our pastors, life group leaders, please come up and make yourselves available just to pray for people. We'll be here to pray in person, just minister to you. And uh, if there's anyone here you've never received Jesus Christ into your life, maybe you came it's because your friend invited you or just visiting. If you never received Jesus Christ, give you an opportunity to pray and receive Christ in your life. The Bible says that as many as have received him, that is Jesus, to them he gives the power to become the children of God. So if you and I open our hearts and receive Jesus Christ into our lives, believe him for who he is, that he died for our sins, he was buried, he rose up again, that and he forgives our sins he makes us the children of God and he brings us into the family of God if there's anyone here you've never done that in your life before I want to just give you an invitation right now to do it if you feel in your heart you want to do it those of you watching online if you feel in your heart you want to do it I'm just going to lead us in a simple prayer before we close so if you've never done this before and you want to do this this morning just say this with me Lord Jesus Come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. And help me to follow you. And you alone. The 
rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Anybody, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time? Anyone in this auditorium, you prayed this prayer? Just raise your hand. I want to see it. Anyone? Anybody pray this prayer with me? Okay, I don't see any hand raised. But if you did pray this prayer with me this morning for the first time, our greeters are waiting there with you uh, out, out of the entrance with bags. We call them new believers back. Just tell them, I prayed this prayer for the very first time. I'd like to have that bag. It has a set of free resources we want, to, want you to take with you. It's going to help you grow in your faith. It also has a card, decision card, that, where you can put your name and number. Give it back to them so that somebody from the church office can call you and guide you into how to use the resources in that bag. All right, let's close. May the God of peace himself sanctify you wholly so that in your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept complete and blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.